Hello there friends and welcome, for today's updated Pathfinder companion build, we have Wendwag, another one of my favorite characters in the game. For my previous guide, I had her mostly as a pure fighter, which is solid and works. But for this updated companion guys, I want to try something different, which is why I went for the Slayer class. This way we have enough feats to maximize both dual wielding and our core ranged feats while also getting lots of extra damage per strike with sneak attacks and some very nice properties on hit, including the spells and some nasty debuffs too. We are going the throwing axes path so that Wendua can dual wield them for an extreme amount of ranged attacks per round for a total of 9. To put it simply, your Wendwag will become a complete machine gun of sorts, except she fires big axes instead of bullets. It's a very fun and very effective build for all difficulties. And I do consider it more efficient than my previous one too, thanks to all of the stuff you add from the Slayer class in a neat package. So without further ado, let us get started on our Wendwag throwing axe machine gun Slayer build. Alright, so Wendua comes at level 1, she's actually one of the most customizable characters together with Scylla and Camellia and also Lon. And my preferred archetype for her is Spawn Slayer. Deliverer can help, but in the case of Wendua, it's not really worth it, because your Zeal ability, well, it won't do anything because Wendua is chaotic evil, and so are the enemies you fight, most of them anyways. Spawn Slayer is the way to go, you'll get a lot of attack bonuses, to enemies of large, huge and gargantuan sizes, and a lot of powerful demonic enemies are of size large or huge. This extra bonus to AB matters a lot because ranged attackers, they tend to have lower AB than melees because they cannot flank the enemy. For skill points, I'd keep perception, lore nature I'd rather save it for another character as Wendwag has low wisdom, mobility because of her high dexterity, and the other skill point is up to you. Since Wendwag can achieve high strength from size boosting spells, you can also go with athletics. Otherwise, if you don't have another party member capable of doing this, go with stealth. For level 3, as a normal feat, get weapon focus and throwing axe, and then as a slayer feat, combat style, two weapon, and two weapon fighting. So now our Wendua can properly do a wheel throwing axes. Just in time, because at least for the first dungeon in the game, you don't really have multiple throwing axes, I think. The reason I prefer to get weapon of focus instead of, let's say, rapid shot or deadly aim is that at the early game, you'll be at your lowest attack bonus, you won't have many buffs or nice abilities to enhance it. So even a plus one from weapon focus can help a lot, especially since when dual wielding you have penalties to AB. Plus as a dual wielder axe thrower, you already have a great amount of attacks per round, which means we can delay rapid shot for a little bit later. At level 4, increase dexterity, which is also what you should increase on most of the other levels, as this is directly tied to Wendwag's throwing axe attack rolls. For her damage though, it is strength that counts, just like composite longbows. At level 3 you also get your first sneak attack dice. And speaking about it, it is why I like to pick a complete sneak attacker for a normal feat. Slayers don't have as high sneak attack progression as rogues for example, so a complete sneak attacker will already add another dice just as level 5 for 2d6 sneaks. Then as the slayer talent, combat trick, while you can already pick deadly aim and rapid shot, if you aren't playing on unfair you might as well pick one of them by now. I'd rather go for improved initiative. The main reason is, first, Wendwag already has high initiative from her dexterity. With this plus 4, chances are she will act before most of the enemies. What this means is, you get to catch them flat-footed for much lower armor class during that first round of battle. And as I said, early game, I much prefer to boost your attack rolls. For level 7, I'd go for deadly aim, and then as a Slayer talent, combat style, and improve with weapon fighting. Because we get more attacks per round now, it's why I prefer deadly aim, rapid shot can come later, as deadly aim will enhance the damage of all your throwing axe attacks. Plus at this point you start getting higher bonuses to AB, to compensate for the loss through deadly aim. For level 9, improve at critical, throwing axe. They don't have the best critical range, it caps out at 19 to 20, just like bows. And then combat trick, rapid shot, as by now you have enough bonuses to compensate the minus 2 penalty, just like with deadly aim. Just remember if you are an unfair and fighting a boss, even for core and hard, you might consider turning rapid shot or deadly aim off. For level 11, greater to weapon fighting as a normal feat. The reason we don't get it as a combat style feat is because by now Wendwag is a level 10 slayer, which means we can use her slayer talents, to pick some very powerful advanced rogue abilities like Wearing Strike and Opportunist. And as a matter of fact, what you want is Opportunist. This does work for ranged attacks 
and it basically gives Wendwag a free attack per round whenever one of your allies strikes an enemy at melee. The more attacks we have, the better, and we truly want our Wendwag to be a machine gun with throwing axes. For level 13, many shot does not work with throwing axes, only bows, which is why I don't pick it. And as far as snapshot, I don't think going the attack of opportunity path with Wendwag for ranged attacks is worth it, because it requires her to be pretty close to the enemies. What I'd rather pick now is Dazzle Display, just to qualify for Shattered Defenses at level 15. Then as a Slayer talent, Dispelling Attack. At this point you'll be close to chapter 4, which is when the demon enemies start coming with a lot of pre-buffs. With Dispelling Attack, on every single throwing axe hit, you attempt to dispel the enemy of one effect. The caster level check will be equal to your character level, so pretty high, just like as if a wizard was casting it. It's a very efficient ability, especially when you consider how many attacks Swendog has per round. For level 15, shatter defenses at last, as always just in time for the frightful aspect spell, as this is when your casters get it. Then as a slayer talent, at this point I'd go for wearing strike. It can help a bit. And the less constitution the enemy has, the less hit points they also have. The only sad part is, a lot of the actual bosses in the game, they are immune to ability damage. But for most of the common enemies, and some of the tougher optional encounters, they'll still be subject to this debuff. Alright, so from level 17 onwards, I'd say you have a few options for multiclassing if you want. Because the thing is, we already have almost everything we could want from Slayer. There are actual benefits to keeping her pure. First you still get two more talents and sneak attack, but most importantly the super overpowered Improved Query ability. It only comes at level 19, but it's very strong, because it is a free action, which means you can easily spam it at every single enemy at no cost, even at the very start of battle. Is this worth keeping Wendwag as a slayer? To me, yes. Because, you know, it's still a high base attack bonus class, we still get a talent, sneak attack, and improved query as a cherry on top. Plus, the fun part is, improved query works against any enemy, no matter their type, no matter if they are demons, angels. And for the first DLC, Inevitable Access, if you plan on doing it, you actually fight a lot of outsiders that aren't demons. But if you want to multiclass her, you can always go with some of the Steppo choices. Ranger and Demon Slayer, it's a high base attack bonus class too, and you gain plus 2 to attack and damage against all demons. Besides that, the classic Alchemist and Vivisectionist, for more sneak attack, and a plus 4 to your dexterity from the mutagen. You can definitely go with one level of Demon Slayer and then either one to three levels of Vivisectionist. At level 17, I'd go for Double Slice. We pick this kinda late. But the thing is, there are so many other powerful feats to pick before, especially since this only increases your damage with your offhand. For a Slayer talent, I'd go for Familiar and the Hair Familiar for another plus 4 to initiative. This might seem useless, but trust me, it helps. We want our Wendwag's initiative to be as high as we can, especially before Mythic Initiative comes into play. So she won't be just a machine gun, she'll also be a sniping machine gun. For level 19, we kinda already have the best fits overall by this point, so you can go with anything you want. I'll pick Improved Precise Shot here, just for the late game enemies that have consumed sources not bypassed by True Seeing. There is always Destructive Dispel or Dispel Synergy too, since Wendwag will dispel on every attack she has. For a Slayer talent, I just go for Combat Trick and Hammer the Gap. It doesn't really make much of a difference, but you know, why not, since we have the space for it. At level 20, you could increase Charisma, but it's not gonna matter. Now, there is something to be said about leaving Wendwag with an odd dexterity score. The chainmail of the Dragonfly Armor has a party-wide ability that increases your dexterity by plus one morale. It only lasts a single minute though, but for boss battles, you can certainly pre-buff with it. Alright, now let's cover mythic progression for our machine gun throwing axe Wendwag. As with most ranged characters, you definitely want Cleaving Shot as your first mythic ability. Being able to also attack nearby enemies whenever you kill an enemy is very efficient for any ranged character. For mythic level 2, I would rather go for mythic weapon fighting here. For dual wielders, this is always huge because it means a plus 2 to the AB of all of your attacks, main hand and off hand. And I do prefer to focus on AB early on especially considering you'll have Rapid Shot and also Deadly Aim to reduce your attack rolls. For Mythic level 3, Distracting Shots. This way, whenever your Wendwag attacks, the enemy will take a very hefty penalty to their melee armor class, which helps most of your allies, as I imagine they're going to be basically melee hitters. As far as ranging shots, I'm not particularly a fan of it because it requires you to miss. 
and we don't want that. Plus, whenever you actually hit the enemy, the bonus will reset, which I find kinda boring. So distracting shots for mythic level 4. You have a few choices. You can already pick mythic critical here and throwing axe. The thing is, well, throwing axes they don't have the best critical range, it's just 19 to 20. Unless you have a trickster main character, which can then increase it even further. Since we don't have that high critical chance, I'd much rather go for Mythic Deadly Aim here, since this will increase the damage of all your attacks, no matter if they are critical hits or not. And since Wendwag is a high base attack bonus character as a Slayer, she will get the best damage boost from this. For Mythic 5, the bigger they are. Just like your spawn Slayer special ability, this also grants you a bonus to ranged attacks whenever attacking enemies. There are of big size, so large, huge, gargantuan and so on. And as I said before, a lot of the demon enemies are, especially the most powerful ones. Plus this will stack with your spawn slayer ability too, so even better for us. For Mythic 6, personally I would still delay Mythic Critical and get Mythic Rapid Shot here to just eliminate the penalty. Although at this point, you might find that your character already has enough bonuses to AB to compensate, so you might go with Mythic Critical earlier, it's up to you. From Mythic level 7 on Wars, as far as normal Mythic abilities, we honestly already have the best ones. As I said, you can go with ranging shots, I just don't really find it useful. Expose Vulnerability I find somewhat underwhelming. It only works on every third hit with your ranged weapon, and even if Wendwag has a lot of attacks, the bonus damage is kinda poor. I mean, 1d6 per 2 Mythic ranks? If it were per 1 Mythic rank like Elemental Barrage, this would be great. But the thing is, it's not like you have that many other great choices, so you might pick it if you like this mythic ability. Ever Ready would only help you for the single attack of opportunity you get from the opportunist Slayer talent. I don't think it's that worth it too. Always a chance though can help. I absolutely despise missing on ones, because they are critical failures. So no matter how high your attack bonus is, if you roll a 1 you are missing. And since Wendwag has a lot of attacks per round, she will miss some of them. So if you ask me, always a chance is what I would pick here. Once again, if you have a trickster main character, because you already have a mythic trick world 2 that applies a similar effect, you won't need it. For mythic rank 8, I'd honestly still delay mythic critical and pick mythic improved initiative here. But that's just me. Just remember, you can go with mythic critical earlier if you prefer. Initiative as always is amazing to catch the enemies flat footed and some of the enemies in let's say the first DLC, Inevitable Excess, they are immune to Fear and Shaken, so you won't be able to proc Shatter defenses against them. As far as Mythic 9, you can pick anything you want. I would personally go with less than here, just in case. It is true that Wendwag as a ranged attacker will almost like never get hit, because she has the range advantage, but you can never be sure. Especially since at this point you're fighting the ultimate demon lords, and once again for the first DLC there's a lot of stacked enemies there. This is just to play it safe. As far as your mythic 10 feet, well at this point you might as well go with mythic improved critical if you didn't pick it before. Or any of the other mythic feats I picked here if you switched them for something else. Alright, now let's cover gear for our ranged Wendwag. For the amulet slot, I do think the back rank assistance talisman is by far the best for any ranged character. It has a super unique property of letting Wendwa get a free ranged attack whenever any ally of hers in a pretty big radius lands an attack of opportunity. And if you're following my order builds, then you know they are made to get tons of attacks of opportunity per round. For the armor slot, since armor class doesn't matter for Wendwa as a ranged character, ultimately I'd go with Snakeskin that you can find in the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles. For the super powerful plus 4 profane boost to dexterity for even higher attack bonus. Before that, you can also go with the web strider for a plus 2 morale to dexterity instead. For the clothing slot, there isn't really anything special here for ranged characters. I just settled for the cloth of heavy fortification, as you can find multiple ones of these just in case, for the 75% chance to ignore critical hits and sing attacks. For the belt slot, at first, spells of dexterity. Later, both Dexterity and Strength, and the Physical Flow Belt can enhance both by plus 6 eventually. For the Glove Slot, Death Dealer is my preferred choice here for the extra sneak attack damage, but if you decide to keep her as almost a pure Slayer, because of the fact that Super Powerful Improved Query ability is a free action, you can also go with the Big Game Gloves to proc very nasty second and even reduce the enemy's armor class without the save debuffs. For the Boot Slots, as with Almost all dexterity based characters, Ronex Sacrifice is by far the best. If you'd rather have this on your main character or someone else, there aren't really that many other boots that enhance ranged attackers. The sure footing boots can provide quite a powerful boost to her first ranged attack every round. The only issue is, 
As far as I'm aware, only Demon Mythic characters can get this. For the helmet slots, ultimately the Shy Lady helmet would be the best, thanks to the huge plus 4 profane bonus to strength, and when Dwarks throwing axes, well, they get extra damage from strength. If you'd rather leave this for another character, well, Headbands of Wisdom can increase her will saving throw. I suppose the Sturdy Snoot can also help for the huge bonus to mobility. For Googles, Piercing Gaze are by far the best as usual, for the huge plus 1 in sight, to attack and damage against demons and other outsiders. For cloaks, I really like the Lone Wolf's cloak for ranged attackers. For rings, the Ring of Guiding Star, also the Merciless Shot Ring, to increase the bonus to point blank shot by an extra plus one. And throwing axes have exactly the range needed for point blank shot at 30 feet. For braces, Abrupt Onslaught is always great for any character that has sneak attack, to increase it even further. Alright, now let us cover Wendwags, weapons, and also quick slots. For weapons, for chapter 1, it's mostly going to be normal throwing axes or Finian. For chapter 2, however, you can find the throwing axe of silence if you do the quest to recruit Arushale earlier at the Lost Chapel, and I do have a guide for that already, you can check to the side here. Ultimately, the best throwing axes come at chapter 3, however, after you defeat the boss of Winter Sun. First, the fixed obsession for stacking damage up to plus 10 whenever you hit the enemy with this axe, it's super powerful. Frost Embrace is also another nice choice. Frost and Icy Burst can be resisted by some demons and enemies, but you know, it helps. And the DC24 Paralyzation feature on hit for the first time you hit an enemy? Well, the DC isn't that high for chapter 3, but it's a free effect on your weapon, so why not? At chapter 4, you can buy the Nordic Welcome Throwing Axe from the Storyteller whenever you meet him at his tower. It's basically an upgrade over the Frost Embrace. For quick slots, there aren't really that many, basically the lucky dice as usual, and there are also some minor pets you can get like the Pipe Fox, to enhance some of Wendwag's skills depending on what you decide to specialize in, like Perception, Stealth and so on. Well alright friends, so this was it for my updated Wendwag's guide, if you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member, it really helps. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!